In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Um, because they don't, well, they don't like the old religion. The old religion is a whole old way of life which is being kicked out by the whole world. Today, the, almost the whole world, turning its back on God. It's extremely serious and it's going to bring down on our heads an extremely serious chastisement unless mankind repents. God will give mankind the chance of repenting by what we know from the apparitions of Our Lady in Garibaldi in the 1960s, which is a ways back, the same time as the Council, at the same time that the Second Vatican Council was turning God's church over to godless people, which is a wicked thing to do uh, because of the whole godless world all around us. The church, which had always been teaching and leading the world, gave up the effort in modern times because it's more and more difficult, because the world is turning more and more against God. The effort becomes more and more difficult to the effort necessary to swim against the tide, to swim against the current, and, and not like a dead fish, just follow the current. The church decided it was going to follow the current of the modern world, which is godlessness, and that, of course, immediately began the breakdown of the Catholic Church, which has been continuing ever since. That's from the 1960s through to the, the 2020s. You can work out how long that is. It's far too long. But it's coming to a crash. It's crashing soon. And Almighty God is going to clean a clean shop. It's going to be very severe, going to be well deserved, and it's going to be the only way for him to stop almost all, almost all souls falling into hell. God did not create this universe with the stars, with the animals, with the mountains, with human beings. He did not create this universe for souls to go to hell. He created it to populate his heaven. And therefore he will intervene to stop men so corrupting the ways that every single one of us falls into hell. And I wouldn't accept myself. It's happened once before in human history. The, the, the flood of Noah. Scripture says... Men had, this was about a thousand years after Adam had started mankind, and it took, with original sin, about, an, about a thousand years for uh, mankind to be so corrupt that Almighty God had to start again. He had to wipe out mankind, except for eight souls, and start again with those eight souls from the ark, saved on the ark. And the ark today is the practice of the true Catholic religion, as it has been ever since our Lord founded and instituted that religion. The world today, after this is, this is time, this is, this is after 2,000 years. From Adam, it was only 1,000 years before men corrupted their ways to, uh, from, uh, in modern times, it's 2,000 years since our Lord instituted his Catholic Church. It's taken 2,000 years, a little more, for the evil to get inside the church and to be undoing the church, undoing our Lord's institution from inside. It's very grave. It's why the world is in such a mess. Because they're turning their back on God. But they have, modern men, the large majority of modern men, have so little idea of God, so little idea of sin, so little idea of how they are offending God that when you say to them the problem is you turn your backs on God they just it's as though you're talking Greek they just don't have a concept of God as he really is God is a sugar daddy it's a nice word he's a nice guy if he exists he's a nice guy and he lets us all into his heaven if he's got a heaven and whether we like it or not we will all go to heaven won't that be nice the world is nice, everybody's sweet, everybody means well. Mm. Ah. Huh. Everybody means well. well look, at the, look at the wars that have been. Not everybody means well. Not everybody is sincere. Not everybody has good intentions. Evil exists. Evil today is rampant because the antidote to evil, the Catholic Church, is so weakened from inside by churching. It's not God's fault. By the churchmen who have virtually handed over the church to the evil, the evil men who do exist. 
and they are in control and they are destroying the church until there will be nothing left if God doesn't intervene. He will intervene. It's very possible he's going to intervene soon. Prepare for a great chastisement by turning to prayer. You may be ignorant, you may be completely out of the habit of prayer, you may be, your faith in the very existence of God may be shaking. Don't doubt it, he exists. He is watching everything going on from his heaven. He sees everything. Everything is going on inside us, better than we see it ourselves. I can easily deceive myself. My pride will stop me from seeing my defects and my sins and my weaknesses and my indignity. I should be blinded to that by my pride. I am a hotshot. I know it. And surprisingly few people around me know it, but I know it. I am a hotshot. So when anybody suggests to me that I'm suffering, <coughs> suffering from original sin or that I commit personal sins and those personal sins offend Almighty God and He exists and His mother exists, I, you're talking Greek. You're just talking Greek. So there is a feast, uh, an important feast, a feast instituted in modern times to help defend the family. The family is something natural. It's, it's not something intrinsically supernatural. It's natural. It's of the natural order. In other words, it's not uh, intrinsically uh, like, like <coughs> great, uh, supernatural grace or faith, hope, and charity, um, these supernatural gifts of God, the family belongs to the order of nature. The order of nature is to the order of supernature, quite different. The two are quite different, but they're, they're, they're meant for one another. Nature is meant, like a bottle of wine is meant for wine, like a bottle of beer is meant for beer, nature and the, the workings of nature are meant to be carriers of supernatural grace, and it's with supernatural grace. If we die with supernatural grace, we will go to heaven. If we die without supernatural grace, if we die in the state of sin, we will fall in, or serious sin, we will fall into hell. If it's not serious sin, it's sin, but not serious sin, it'll be purgatory, <coughs> because our God's heaven won't admit of anything less than perfection, and purgatory is a huge opportunity to perfect oneself without having to fall into hell. Few souls, death, go straight to heaven. A small number go to purgatory at death. The large number falls into hell at death. Are you surprised at that? Look around you. You know what people are getting up to. And they're not striving to stay in the state of grace. There are poor sinners who are striving to stay in the state of grace. Those, if they persevere, will at least go to purgatory. Those who get out of sin, stay out of sin, and don't want anything more to do with sin, and f finally achieve a high state of grace when they die, those few will go to straight to heaven. Otherwise, we, need, we have a council that you must settle with Almighty God, and that he will demand very exactly, having known himself from eternity, from eternity. Why? Because there can't be a change in God. God can't learn anything. If he learned anything, there'd be a change in him. So he knows, he knows everything inside us from birth to death. Does that mean that we are predetermined? No. That we can, we, we're going to do evil because, we, because God knows it. We're going to do the evil, but it's by our choice. It won't be God that does it. So it will be by our choice. But those who um, make no mistake, Almighty God sees. But He is God, therefore He, although He sees, He doesn't force us and He doesn't determine us. We still have free will and it's we that choose. If we go to heaven, in fact, it will be thanks to God. If we fall into hell, that, that seems to be a contradiction, but it's the truth. If we get to heaven, that will be by the gift of God. If we fall into hell, it will be our free choice. Mysterious. Mysterious, but that's how it is. 
The good comes from God and the evil comes from ourselves. And the evil today is rampant. It's creating a world in which the family, which is a natural creation of God, a natural design of God, the family is being destroyed deliberately by the governments, by the wicked governments, the godless governments of today. They pass laws, for instance, to oblige the woman to work outside the home. They can't make any meets unless she, there's a second, second income in the family. And they pass laws to make, they, they, they pass taxation laws to favor youngsters living in sin. They have, uh, if they're living in sin, uh, they, they, uh, they're not taxed as one. If they, if they marry properly, normally, they will be, suffer, they will suffer from extra tax than if they're living in sin. The tax system encourages living in sin, encourages breaking the law of God, encourages smashing up the family. The Feast of the Holy Family follows closely on Christmas because, of course, Christmas made us so much think of the Holy Family, Saint Joseph, the Mother of God, and our Divine Lord. And the first thing to notice about the Holy Family Number one is St. Joseph, he's head of the family. Number two is Mary. Number three, at the bottom, is our Divine Lord, who is God. She is the Immaculate Conception, so she is more, 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 a great, much greater saint than St. Joseph, although St. Joseph was a great saint. But it's number, number, number one, God, who puts himself at the bottom. She puts herself in the middle, and it's the number three who is head of the family. In other words, God is reversing exactly the order of the world. And it, he's teaching by his example of humility. Today's lesson is the fifth mystery of the Holy Ro of the, the, the fifth joyful mystery of the Holy Rosary. And it's the mystery where our Lord stays behind while the family, which has come down from Nazareth to Galilee, the three, the Holy Family, the three persons, Joseph, Mary, and our Lord, they've come down from Galilee to, to um, Judea, to Jerusalem, which is a journey. And on the way back, they overnight somewhere, and our, la our Lord, Our Lady, and St. Joseph are so used to our Lord being so obedient and so... They, they can rely on him, they, 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 they didn't check when they were leaving Jerusalem that he would be with them. They could safely assume he would be with the group come from Galilee and, and he would be going back with them. But the, uh, the night comes and they don't find him in the group. And the mother of God begins to, goes around everybody, well, have, you seen, uh, have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? Nobody's seen him. Huh? What's happened to him? Hmm. <clears throat> Back they go to Jerusalem, and Joseph and Mary, of course, go back to Jerusalem. But, but they don't immediately find our Lord. Now, our Lord knows he's God. He knows exactly where they are in Jerusalem. He knows he, and he, would be, he could obviously go and meet them and put an end to their anguish. He doesn't. He, it's only after three days that they finally think of looking for him, perhaps. They finally think of looking for him in the temple, and there they find him. And, she, and Mary is, it's not a rebuke, but it is a question. Jesus, why did you do this to us? Do you realize how anxious your, your father, she calls him his father, it's his foster father. Do you realize how anxious Joseph, uh, your father, is, and I have been? Why did you do this to us? She can't understand. And his answer, of course, is sublime. Um, did you not know why, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I should be about my father's business? Great lesson. The family is a supreme value, but God even comes before family. And therefore, he must serve God first. And his beloved and blessed mother needs to learn that lesson. What? Scripture says, when they went home, she didn't understand. She still didn't understand how he, God, perfect, could have put his mother and his foster father through such anguish. She couldn't understand. She still didn't understand. She didn't understand. If there's anybody, if there's, if there's any human creature that has ever
got closest to understanding God, it's she. And she didn't understand. Well, that's the primacy of God. God comes even in front of family. But the, the lesson is, of course, the closeness of the family, nevertheless. And Scripture says, when they got back to Galilee, he obeyed them. Subdu to Seratidis. He obeyed them. He was subject to them. The family today is in terrible trouble. The father has, has lost his masculinity. The women, the mother <coughs> is un, out of control. The, woman, the women are out of control. The children don't listen to their parents. The parents don't any longer know how to look after children. Children are not adults, it's obvious, it's common sense. But common sense is a gift of God, and because mankind is making war on God, today it's also making war on common sense. Men are deliberately washing out of their heads common sense. And therefore they don't realize, they pretend in the name of equality. Now you can see how diabolical liberty, equality, fraternity, equality, in the name of equality, the women are supposed to be just like the men, which is completely false. Women are quite different from men. And women have gifts to look after the family, to have children, to look after the children, which men don't have. Men can't have children. They'll notice how they're, they're, they're taught now of making men pregnant. What? It's ridiculous, completely ridiculous. But it's part of the war against God, the war against nature, the war against common sense, the war against God's plan for the family. We're going to have diff completely different style families today. The man and the woman and the husband and the wife are going to be absolutely equal. That's one ship with two captains. It won't fly. And it flies apart. And divorce. So many divorces. And the parents say, oh, we're so arguing with one another. It's better for the children if we separate. No, it isn't. It's better for the children if you stay together and you stop arguing. And if the woman submits to her husband. Ha! What? Yes, the woman submits. Why? Go back to Genesis. Why the woman submits? Because she not only sinned, listening to the devil and eating, eating the apple of the tree of, of, good, of the knowledge of good and evil, she not only sinned, she also made Adam sin. Adam sinned. It's his fault. And it was his responsibility, as the head of the two of them, that he was head even then, although there was no, there was no sense of inequality, but with the fall entered the need of the woman to be controlled by the man. And it's Almighty God who says so. If you, Eve, hadn't fallen, you might still be, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have the same aggravating subordination to your husband. But since you've fallen, you're going to have to pay for it, and you will be under, this is words of God, look it up in Scripture, chapter 3. You will be under your husband, under the dominion of your husband. It goes back to the very beginning of the human race that the wife is not equal to the husband. She needs to be controlled by him. And a modern woman is out of control. And she's proud of it. Poor woman. And she's not being properly led by her menfolk. The man needs to be under God. The man needs to be under God. And that makes it a lot easier for the woman to be under the man. St. Paul says, one, two, three, four, one God, two, Jesus Christ as man, not as God. Obviously, as God, Jesus is the equal of the Father and the, the, the Holy Ghost. There is no inequality there. Jesus is number two as man. Number three, says St. Paul, man. And number four, woman. And St. Paul has a number of quotes about the role of women, the part of them, which today are completely forgotten, not to say deliberately wiped out. And therefore the very basis of the family, which is the union of, the right union between man and woman, that very basis of the family, that start of the family, that foundation of the family is already smashed up today. And the men are not men because they're not under God, and they don't realize what God brings, 
how God requires of them to be under him, obviously. I am the Lord thy God, that, that's the first commandment. And then the woman will be under the man. And the children will be under the parents. But the fourth commandment is not a one-way track. It's not only the parents need to be under their ch the ch children need to be under their parents. It's obviously a two-way traffic. The parents need to look after the children. The parents need to discipline the children. Spare the rod and spoil the child is in scripture. It's in the wisdom books, in the scripture. Proverbs, I think it's in more than one place. Spare the rod and spoil the child. It's common sense. Assuming that you recognize original sin. But if you don't recognize, if you refuse the faith, you refuse God, you refuse original sin, you refuse to accept that you are yourself a sinner, why then you're going to have a completely different education system by which every little Johnny is an angel. My Johnny is an angel. How did you punish him today? That's wrong. And then the whole county council, the city council, everybody will support her Everybody's against the original sin, and the poor parents still believe that the, the child needs to be disciplined, and that discipline him is the parents who get in trouble with the police, and so on, and so on, and so on. The whole world today is upside down. It's tragic, it's terribly serious. And how many poor youngsters, young men, young women today, come from a broken home, in which it's been very difficult for them to, very difficult, not impossible, very difficult for them to, put trust in authority, to believe in authority, because their own dad fooled around and did not look after his wife and did not look after his children, as he should, in a sane and healthy family. But the whole of modern life is, de almost des is, is designed to shatter the family so that the youngsters will not know which way to turn, they will not weigh which way is up, and they will be the mindless fodder, cannon fodder of the New World Order, which is the triumph, which will be the triumph of the evil men over the plans of God, which start with the family. God wants every young boy or girl to be born in a family, and a family that holds together. And men and women must realize how different they are, and go back to recognizing that they're different. Go back to recognizing that both of them need to be under God, the man first under God, then the woman under the man. Ha! Huh. Try telling that today to, no, 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 human pride. Pride is a terrible sin. Pride blinds. People can't see straight when they're proud. But what pride blinds to is how God designed the family and how families, that's a natural way, it's natural for parents to love and look after their children. It's natural for, for children to love and respect their parents. That is natural. But today, Leo XIII had to write about an encyclical about the family, about, uh, and, and, and the, the Catholic Church, to defend nature from the wicked modern world towards the end of the, ninth, the 19th century, introduced this feast of the Holy Family so that the, what is natural would be backed up and supported and protected also by the supernatural of the Catholic Church. Youngsters, uh, don't think that if you're born and bred in today's world, you've got to go the way of today's world. And think seriously of not going the way the world is going. You will not look for a woman who is out of control. You will not look for a husband who um, deserves to be respected. But the truth of the matter is that men run on respect while women run on love. What a woman needs is love. She needs to love and to be loved. That's what she runs on. Like gas, a car runs on gasoline, <coughs> women run on love. Men run on respect. It's different. And therefore, St. Paul says, Husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter towards them. And he then turns to, the, hus, hus, to the, the wife and says, obey your husband. Ha! Huh. How many women today can, can tolerate being told to obey their husband? And if, they're not, if the man is not ideal, if he's a creature of the modern world, she needs to exercise self-control 
in order to practice what our Lord wants in the family, which is a mother who looks after her husband and looks after her children, and who obeys her husband, except in sin. And the husband needs to recognize that he does not have the right at the age of 55 to be creeping around the town in sneakers and tight jeans because uh, his duty is to look up, be looking after his family and to give them a good example in order to go to heaven. And if, and if, and if, and if men and women insist on disobeying uh, God's plan um, from the family onwards, if they break up the family or allow the family to break up, but how can people without God have any idea of what, how they need to put their family together again? Youngsters, you are not obliged to follow the world. You are not obliged to go with the current. You are not obliged to stop swimming and just enjoy yourself drifting down the pleasures of life. Because you will drop into hell. You are not obliged. If you choose it, that's your choice. And the other, you will have the consequences of your choice. If you want to raise a happy family with a happy wife and happy children, look after them. And in the, ca in the case of need, discipline them. That, aha! Never discipline without love, never love without discipline. If you want to choose well, boys, choose. There's a Chinese proverb when you're choosing a wife, close your eyes and open your ears. Because your eyes, you can be fascinated and completely lost. Ears, you will see what she's really about, much better than by the eyes. And if you like the mother, marry the daughter. If you don't like the mother, don't marry the daughter, because there's a good chance the daughter will be like, like the, her mother, will grow up like her mother, a good chance. Boy, girls, choose a man that you can respect. Choose, if you want to go to heaven, choose a young man who has the faith, who has the Catholic faith and who will give you a good example, and who will guide you, if not, not to, because that, that word goes, goes over much better than control you. Nevertheless, what God says and what his apostle says, obey your husband, give him respect. What he needs is respect. What men run on is respect, not so much love. Although they do need to be loved, but it's not like the woman needs to be loved. Women, men don't run on love. They run on a sense, a sense of, of, of organizing things, of leading. That's what, that's what men should be doing. A feast of the Holy Family, protected by the church, taught by the church. And even today, if you look for the truth, you will find the truth. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. And it will be, it will be opened to you, says our Lord in the Sermon on the Mount. Therefore, dear youngsters, dear young people, don't follow the modern world. Do learn how the Catholic Church teaches what we all of us need to know about creating a happy family on the model of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.